Okay, so we're back again with another video. We've been talking about trust over the past several days. Even through last week, we've been talking about how to regain and or restore the trust once that trust has been broken. We've identified what trust is. We've also talked about the first point of restoring that trust. And that first point is practicing what is called communication. Okay, so in this next portion, we're going to talk about our second, the number two thing that we need to do, and that is practice. Okay, ready for this big word? Practice forgiveness. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard because depending upon what the circumstance is, it's hard to forgive those that have hurt you, maybe hurt your loved one, maybe hurt you yourself, maybe hurt your child. Maybe hurt you on your job, hurt you in your finances, uh, maybe have stolen from you. And it's hard to practice forgiveness. But one thing I have learned that we, when we learn the art of forgiveness, and it first begins with forgiving ourselves. Number one, you know, we're the hardest uh, people on, on ourselves, right? No one can be harder on ourselves than us. You know, we hold ourselves accountable. We look back on ourselves and sometimes we think to ourselves, man, how stupid was I to listen to that person? How stupid was I to do that thing, buy uh, that thing, uh, that purchase, rely on this individual. Um, how stupid was I to trust that man or that woman, that parent, that boy, that girl, that child, uh, maybe on your job, that supervisor, that manager, that coworker that stabbed you in the back, you know, took credit for something that you know you had your name on. And you go, man, I, I, how stupid was I? And we hold that so much so personal to us because we're thinking to ourselves that we harden our heart, we get upset, we we kind of, I'm not going to say we go get irate, but we have this thing on ourselves where we put ourselves in a kind of in a stupor, you know, in a stupor state where we actually put ourselves in a box because we are so hard on ourselves. So forgiveness, one, begins with forgiving ourselves because it's hard to forgive others when we first haven't forgiven ourselves. And this goes to the one that hurt you as well as let's just say you're the one who hurt the other that individual or those individuals. And you have to forgive yourself because when you hurt other people, you then become, you're not only the victim, but you're also the perpetrator. So then after you become the perpetrator, you realize you're the one that did it. You're the one that caused it. You're the one who said what you said. You're the one that didn't stand up when you should have. You're the one that allowed things to happen. Or you're the one that didn't say anything at all. You, you didn't stand up for what is right. You become not just the victim, but you also are the perpetrator. And when you're the perpetrator and you know you did wrong, when you first take that self inventory and that reflection, and like I said before, when you turn that window into a mirror and you stop looking at everybody else as the problem and we take a personal introspective on ourselves and say, you know what? I did that. I did that thing. Then you have to start in that forgiveness mode because if you stay in, oh, I'm a loser. I should have done this. I was stupid. I'm not worthy. This will never happen. And, you know, and you get in that mode, it's hard to get out of that box to forgive others because you're so hard on yourself. So again, forgiveness, number one, after the communication, we have to learn to forgive ourselves. We have to practice forgiveness of ourselves. And then of course, the next thing is once we've forgiven ourselves and say, you know, yeah, I did that. Or you know what? I allowed that to happen because you're on the, maybe the, you did it or maybe you're on the receiving end. Then you have to go, you know what, whether I get a real explanation from that person of why they did what they did or not, I forgive them. I've got to forgive them because what I don't want to do is harbor things that are going to hurt me in my future by not practicing forgiveness. Because sometimes when we don't forgive others, what happens is we take them into that next relationship. We take that into our next job. We take that into that next thing. Maybe you're dealing with that next child. Maybe your child, your son, your daughter hurt you. Maybe that husband or that wife hurt you. Maybe that mother, that father hurt you. And what happens is Later on in life, there will be triggers. Yeah, I said it. There will be triggers that remind you of what happened because you never dealt with it. 
you never dealt with that forgiveness of forgiving that individual what happens when you see them again at a function what happens when you see them at that next job what happens when you see them at that funeral or that wedding what happens when you see them uh, at that next family event what happens when you see them at that picnic what happens when you see them at that next church function for those of you that are involved in worship what happens when you see them in the store at Costco what happens when you see them at Walmart or uh, coals or something like that. What, how do you do that? How do you walk alongside and know that you can forgive a person where you can speak to them and not harbor any thoughts of what was? That's when you're really practicing forgiveness. Because sometimes it's hard to forgive others when you've poured your heart into a relationship. You've poured your heart into a job. You've poured your heart into your parents or into your children. And it seems as though it goes completely unappreciated. So forgiveness, number one, starts with you. You must learn first to forgive yourself. And then the art learn the art practice the art of forgiveness for others but start with yourself and then practice the art of forgiving others and then after that we will move on to point number three till then take care <laughs>